A lot of those groups that I was brought up on, from the Commodores to the Earth, Wind & Fire to Al Green, Curtis Mayfield, all that, the sounds that they did back then, they don't do them like that no more. They started getting into the computer generation and newer equipment, and, and that style died, and, and the funk was, just didn't sound rugged like it used to. It's something about that, just that beat, man. It, 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 it's, it, it moves you in a certain way before you even hear vocals. It, it, it's, it's, it's a driving force. To me, Premier embodies the best possible combination of an innovator in the DJ realm and an innovator in the production realm. You could tell he was a DJ first, got good at that, and then started making his own beats and just utilized records in every possible way. And the artists I work with, I always kind of hear the song before I do it. And what it is is when I start looking for samples or sounds on, other, on old records or whatever, I'm trying to find that sound that I heard in my head. And until it sounds like what I'm looking for, if I gotta search for a month until it sounds like what I'm looking for, that's how long it's gonna take. When Guru heard me do my demos and, and, and put me in, into Gangstar, I knew that I, I, should, I don't deserve 50% of the money if I just DJ. I gotta do something else. That's why I started saying, let me learn how to do beats. And then I'm putting my 50% into the group. I feel like if you're a DJ, you should know how to produce tracks because we rearrange tracks and remix tracks just from having records around. So if you can do it at a party or make mixtapes, you should be able to do, you know, hot tracks. What's up, California? What the fuck's going on? I never wanted to be an MC. I rock the mic when I'm on stage and I command the crowd and I do all that because I learned from the old school and how they get a crowd to cooperate. It's a certain way you have to talk to them. I can say, come on, everybody, let's get your hands up. They ain't gonna sit there, but if you say it to them like, yo, you know, blah, 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 and you kick it to them with the proper attitude, they're gonna wanna get down with you. They might say that we're a menace to society, but at the same time I say, why, why is it me? me? Am I the target what? for destruction? What about the system? A total corruption. I can't work at no fast food joint. I got some talent, so don't you get my point? I'll organize my niggas and get crazy. Selling D I U D S. If I chose to be an MC, believe me. I probably have to go through a lot more drama than I do as a DJ because of the fact that the MC is more vocal. So when you're speaking a, vo a voice like that and you're selling over 100,000 albums, you're touching so many people. They're taking what you're saying to them and they're hoping that you are what you talk. And I, I tell that to Guru every day, yo, let's be about everything we drop because we're going to get tested on it. If, we, if, if the people on the street don't test us on it, God's going to test us on it. Making your own vinyl is, uh, it adds a different level from when I was just playing other people's records and can just, you know, I kind of had to go with whatever their format was. I've got, uh, this record that I put out that I made where it's nothing but guitar tones. And, um, it's a whole octave. So you can play it like an instrument. Kind of evolved people used to not like vinyl that was kind of set up for djing because they thought it was cheating but then i think music started to be made anyway catered towards djs so records specifically for turntablists and battle djs and that sort of thing started popping up these are ultimate breaks and beats you know that whole digging in the crates thing these kind of like helped a lot of guys find those breaks that are just not around. This was an opportunity for them to just, like, have these. There are hundreds all over the place. This record contains seven different noises. Noise number one is the, the horn stab. <laughs> and then the numbers. One, two, three, and then, and then the, the tweak tone. And then the, the crash.
any other sounds, you guys, because Scratch besides. Whoosh! Billboards, someone scratching, you look on the commercials, there's a DJ, the video games are coming out of there have DJs on it, the clubs, every, everything is, is DJ oriented. It's everywhere. Everywhere you go, people are buying turntables, people are scratching. Just in the amount of DJs, I mean, it's thousands of new ones every day. It's, kids want turntables and a mixer when they graduate from high school. They don't want a car, they, you know, they want turntables and a mixer. I'm gonna read through the order one more time. So we're gonna start off with Will, DJ Spaz, second, Daniel, DJ Frog. So after Daniel, we got Mike, DJ Tech, David, DJ Static. Then we're going to do a set from the rappers. Show me what okay. rappers to put on them. So anyway, I think the most important thing is that you guys enjoy yourselves when you do it. It's a good thing to do with kids because they can put a record on and they can feel like, all right, you know, I'm making music. And so, you know, they can just come on the first day and be successful. And they're nervous enough just in class doing it in front of other kids sometimes, you know, but doing it here, it's a huge room, you know, and even if they're all not standing right in front of the stage, there's a hundred people in the room. They're nervous. It's cool to be the one controlling the crowd, you know what I'm saying? All the kids around me in my class, they say, oh, guys, you gonna uh, DJ the next dance? I said, yeah, I'll be there. They said, we'll be dancing, scratching or playing music or whatever. So it's cool. You know what I'm saying? We rappers, but we be doing a little DJ. You see the little shirt right here. So DJ, they cool because, you know, a lot of guys like it. You know, they be bumping in the cars and stuff like that. It's, it's the whole hip-hop thing. Yeah, it's the whole hip-hop thing. Everything has to do with hip-hop. Scratching. Yeah, what is it? Scratching. 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 that uh, in England, in the last few years, that uh, turntables are outselling guitars. There's no doubt about it that the DJ industry has doubled in size in the last year alone and has captured the uh, American youth in the same style that youth were playing guitars and drums back in the 60s. The turntablist guys have really made a big splash. There are competitions like Disco Mix Club, ITF, a really fueled innovation. You have people like the like Burke and Rock Raider, Mixmaster Mike. It's definitely booming. Hip hop has been wonderful to us as a company. When they have a demonstration, you know, it's just the area is packed. 
you know, people standing all over the place. We've had some legendary guitar players, maybe 10 or 12 people, you know. I spent all this time with Shane to learn all these, like, licks and everything, you know, musical theory and everything. And these guys come along, you know, scratching up the place. I've tried out myself, but I didn't know what they're doing. They could do some really neat stuff with it. But I guess, honestly, I hope it doesn't become the number one instrument out there. I don't know, that'd just be a letdown. The turntable can entertain you for a while, but if you are only entertained that way, then you are eventually going to be dull. Kind of a silly way of making a, a noise that's not too pleasant to ears. Without musical instrumentation, what do they have to scratch? What are they going to do when electricity runs out and they're stuck with acoustic guitars? <laughs> I don't know. Let's get a record. Regular record. Any record will work. Have your little vinyl killer van. You can see uh, myself, shortcut, keyword here, riding the van. Put the needle on. Turn on the van. Get ready for a lot of fun and excitement. Now, let's start. sort of identified it with the whole Grateful Dead culture. I think we're in completely a new culture right now, which I feel that the Invisible Scratch Pickles initiated. And now, with a lot of the other crews around the Bay Area, you have a whole new energy source. For Filipinos, or American Filipinos at least, we don't really have role models, you know, as far as mass media goes. You know, there's no athletes, there's no actors. You know, we have our parents and Hubert. And, you know, whether Q likes or dislikes the idea, he's very much a role model. You see it, you know, even the Australian DJ champs are a couple Filipino guys, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's more than a coincidence, you know, and I really attribute it to Hubert and, and Mike and Apollo, like, putting the DJing out there so much. Visible Scratch Pickles presence, you just kind of go, uh -oh. Because, you know, I mean, they're the most influential DJs that have ever lived. Expanding as the Invisible Scratch Pickles. They're not going to use that name anymore. And they're more going to sort of just do like solo things. And it's like the Sex Pistols. They, it was like they broke up at the peak. It was perfect. Yeah. Our Operation IV, the day their album came out, they broke up. I'm waiting for the DJ PlayStation game. You got your Burger King DJ, you know what I mean? You got your fucking, uh, you got your L L.A. gel commercials with some fucking DJ. What the fuck is that? What does the turntable have to do with your hair? Same shit that happened to breakdancing is going to happen to DJing, too. You know what I mean? If the true motherfuckers will survive and still be doing it 20 years from now, and then there will be all those fools that ju jump on it for, you know, for the trend of it. That's the whole thing. We got so kind of tired of the MCs. Fuck you guys, you know? We're going to do our own thing. But now we're kind of screwing ourselves because we're almost kind of doing what... The, the MCs were doing. We're taking this DJ thing, and no one's pushing the boundaries, and everyone gets up there and they just do their little diddle da da and they go to the next guy, and he does his little deal. No one's throwing in any originality, and we're just kind of getting typecast into this, oh, that's turntablism, or that's turntable music. 
I know the boundaries of that. I know where that's gone. You got all these new kids. They got like 10 records, and they're just battle yeah. records. Yeah. You know, and that's that's their collection forever. And they no, think no, that's no, no. when that record wears out, they go and buy it again. Like a lot of scratch DJs and and uh, DJs that are like battle DJs don't know the first thing about digging for records and how to rock a party. You know, how to get on the mic. It's really important to get on the mic and speak to the crowd. People should make music to make people want to party, and not just like make music for people to study you know it should make you want to party and shake your ass and like yeah why does that get some girls studied? to dance for you know? why, is it, why does it gotta be studied i want it back i want it dirty i want it crunchy i want it raw i want to get them to most of the world you know this whole culture and this thing is maybe 20 years old you know what i mean if that and uh we're just on the brink of something new and and i just know right now it doesn't really bother me because i just know i look at the kids who are into it now they're obsessed like I am, and, and I, I see them not quitting anytime soon, and I just can't imagine what it's going to be like when, when they're the older ones, right. when, when they're making decisions, when, they, when they're going to say what's cool, what sells, what is fine music, what is not. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an experimental record. It's an experimental for me, and I hope it's be experimental for you. There's always been a mystery about the drum. The, the drum, the, the drum. The drum, 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 the DJs are a rocker party, and, and they're just DJs who can really cut well. But what we try to do with the Future Primitive is bring those worlds together. The party rocker, the guy who collects deep breaks, the producer-minded individual, people who are, like, in there digging nonstop. That's the backbone, like in a jazz band. That's the drummer. Then you have the soloist, the turntablist, the, the scratcher, taking you on those abstractions. thought that anything that flows you can find parallels to and merge. The exciting thing about hip hop is it was already doing that originally, you know, the four elements, breakdancing, DJing, graffiti, and MCing. They're trying to marry a lot of different styles and a lot of different flows. Like with Doge, he paints behind it. That, that same fluidity in the way he paints and what's happening in the mix, there's definitely a parallel there. When I'm painting to a DJ in a club, the DJ talks to me, I talk to the audience. Hip hop is the lifeblood of my work, and turntablism is the next step, and it and it coincides with the auto visual package of Future Primitive. The DJ gets the the B boys going, you know what I'm saying, the breaks and whatnot. They've always been the architects, the foundation of, of the dance, the art, the MC. They're the conductors. They're the ones who lead you to where you want to go. Rhythm is really important. It's like a if you want to reach that spiritual kind of medium and in your soul it's like it's like the indians when they when they wanted to speak to the gods and stuff uh, they would have like a uh, uh, rain dances and that would be with the drums you know and af after a while the drums just get hypnotic and stuff and this they, they go into a trance and so music is trance inducing like hypnotic it gets you in that spiritual state You know, you just totally just, you just all into it. You know, you're just, you're just, you're just getting the whole. It's like you're not, you're not playing the instrument. It's like you're the instrument, and the universe is playing you. It's some kung fu stuff. I don't know. It's just you're just in there, and you you don't feel it. You're just flowing. Nothing can stop you.
used to go by the name of Grand Mixer DXT. And tonight, I want to knight my brother, Cuba, with the Grand Mixer. So Cuba. This is the Grand Mixer. You know, when you're standing at a turntable, and you sit there and you're watching it turn, and you think about what you're going to do with that turntable to freak people out. It's a heavy thing, man. It's something that you got to really interact with that turntable, watching it swing, looking at it time after time after time. And it's very obvious that this brother has been indoors for a long time, many hours. I know, because I used to do the same thing. And to see somebody take something to the next level and pass that baton, then he deserves that right to use that name. The Grand Mixer Cuba. I believe everyone is one. Every everything is one whole big ball of energy. Kind of like the Star Wars thing about the Force. You know, everything is just everyone's connected. You know, and we're all just like one energy. Like we think we're separated, but everyone affects everyone. When you find out you're not separated, it's like say um, say like a, everyone is a, a limb of a one whole thing. So why would you want to hurt your hand or hurt your fingers or hurt your arms when you know? That, that person is part of you. So in order to help people, I make music for them and you know teach people about scratching and and, and I guess try to brighten up their lives or whatever. You know, that, that's my whole destiny on this earth. Q Bird and Mixmaster Mike and they all tell me, hey man, when we saw you, that was it. We you know, and I know that I've affected the population of the planet Earth. That's a great film. I feel that people today are realizing that what they're doing now came from somewhere. In order for it to go any further, it has to go around the 360 in order for it to go even further. And I always say, you have to know where hip hop's been in order to know where it's going. You have to, you have to. Well, I always know things goes into cycles and it's all coming together. I just hope to see it be intergalactic. Since we are becoming galactic humans, you know, we're trying to get to Mars and Jupiter and all that, so I'm ready to see it on all the other planets in our solar system. Not the nine planets, but the 12 or 13 that's out there. That's what I'd like to do with turntables. Show the world that, you know, there's, some, there's something really cool out there, you know? Something different. They should give me a dollar, you know? <laughs> you know? You know? You know? You know?